champions find a way. Remember that phrase. Constantly find, just constantly remember that because it is about pedigree. It's about what you can do with the battles that you've gone through that have molded you, that have given you the confidence or the lack thereof in certain situations. How to face certain situations, pardon the redundancy. But in the case of Argentina, they found ways to win games. What was it? 36 out of 37 that they had won or they had not lost, I should say, before they faced Saudi. Then they had six other matches. So that would be, I'm doing my math real quick, it would be 42 out of 43 that they have not lost. And then add, of course, the four friendlies now today. That would be 47 out of 48 matches that Argentina have found a way to get the result they need. Today was no exception to that rule. Argentina found a way. And what a way to find it because it tended to be a player that didn't play one of his better games. It was a player who did find himself muddled, like much like many of the other Argentine players who had problems breaking down the lines that Ecuador established. It was Leo Messi. Imagine that yet again, him finding... And look, with Leo, there's only one thing, one moment, one time that you need to give him a chance and he's going to break through. It doesn't matter how many good moments or bad moments he had in that match. If he has one opportunity like that, a free kick that basically it seems like it's a half a goal every time he gets it at this stage of his career. It ends up being a valid situation. It ends up being a valid analysis of, of, of how this team plays. And it's not only that. When you end up having these the, the matches that we've seen in the recent past that Argentina's played, be it Copa America, be it the World Cup, they've found ways. They've found Players that have stepped up in certain moments to be problem solvers, to be solutions to certain issues. Today, obviously the biggest problem solver ended up being Leo Messi. He was not the man of the match, by the way. In the opinion of many, he was not the man of the match. It was Cuti Romero. Cuti Romero was solid in the back. A player that is, with every match that has gone by, and that he's played, he's consolidated himself as one of those players in that spine in the middle of the pitch that ends up being such an asset for Lionel Scaloni. He ends up being that. He ends up being such an invaluable piece of this Argentine puzzle. The way he played today was just sensational. Defending, winning balls, um, complicating the attacks for Ecuador, breaking up attacks for Ecuador. I mean, an Ecuador side that played sensational. They played a very good match. They went to the Monumental and they left it all out there. Which, if you think about it, let's erase that, that moment of magic that Messi has with that free kick. Do you honestly think that it was fair for it to end up being a scoreless draw? Absolutely. It could have been. It should have been, as a matter of fact. But then again, when you give Leo Messi a free kick in that sector, how are you going to end up saying that he can't score? How he can't be the difference maker, which he ends up being. Like I said before, you only have to give him that. Now, I don't want to end up talking just about him. But you do have to talk about him at a certain point. What you do also have to do is to talk about Cuti Romero and how he played defensively, how he also ended up being um, on, the, on an occasion or two or three or four an option on the attack so there's that too of course in the middle the one that ends up making a huge difference as well ends up being Rodrigo de Paul because uh, in my opinion Alexis McAllister didn't have one of his better games Nico Gonzalez well yeah he was okay but those players in the midfield at that point weren't able to break lines 
Depot was the difference maker there because he took on that responsibility of dribbling through, of trying to link up with Messi, of trying to open play, of trying to go and run at the defense, of going in and trying to get that ball into three quarters to get into that final area to be able to create opportunities for Argentina. That ends up being the big difference for Argentina in that sector of the pitch. I almost already mentioned the performance of Cuti Romero as well. It's pedigree, ladies and gentlemen. It's finding a way to win. And it's someone saying, today it's my turn. Today is my turn. And of course, today the captain says, no, no, no. Today I do it once again for you. He only needed one moment. He only needed one chance. He got it. He took advantage. It ends up being 1-0. They end up winning. It wasn't the greatest game for Argentina. But at this stage, it's not about having great games. It's about starting from a certain point and it being a launching pad for seeing how they end up going to Copa America. It ends up being the launching pad or the beginning to see how they can end up maybe even going to 2026. And you don't want to be at your best. Maybe. I mean, I might be talking out of my ass in this particular instance. That might not be the best take that I might have in this episode. But if you understand what I'm trying to say here, you don't want to have your best moment in 2023 by the end of 2023, September 2023, at the expense of maybe not doing well in 2026. But it's it's the, the building blocks that end up being created to this new Lionel Scaloni 2.0 project that starts to build officially as of today. Today was the first day that Argentina begins to defend their crown that they won in Qatar over in the month of December. So all that... You start analyzing it, you start looking at it, you say, yeah, that, that seems like a very plausible, it ends up being a very legitimate thing to start saying, to start delving into, to see how they're going to do. Now, what you have to start looking at is what they're going to do in La Paz. How, how are things going to be rotated? Obviously, no Angel Di Maria, but Angel Di Maria at this stage of his career, now, let's remember it because many were asking for him to start tonight. He didn't. But if you look back and you remember the World Cup, how many matches did he start? Not many. He did start the final. He ends up being a big protagonist in the final, obviously. But today he wasn't. I mean, but he did come in. He had some moments. He missed a shot that went wide. He ends up creating some interesting situations down that far side, down the left side again. So he it, it, it becomes that, that ace in the hole for Lionel Scaloni. And it ends up being an interesting proposition if you start delving into it. How, how you can end up putting Nico Gonzalez, you can end up looking at Di Maria as an option. You do have players that now with a World Cup under their you know under their belt, with all these, they are the favorites to win Copa America next year. No doubt about it. They have a swagger. They have a confidence. Not only that, they have a purpose. They have an incredible purpose for one another because when you see them join the, from the respective clubs to the national team, when they get together, you end up seeing how unified this nucleus of a team is, this group. Because a nucleus is basically everybody. Everybody that gets involved, everybody that comes in, everybody that's added on, they fall in line with the project. They fall in line with the ideals, with the values, and also with the group and the collective. I mean, it's a very different team compared to when you start looking at the World Cups in 2010, 2014, and of course 2018, where it was a very different team. It was a very different internal dynamic, different types of pressures. Where And, and I, mind you, if, if you remember, or some of you, might have remembered when I, when I was over in Jamaica with World Cup Qual or well, World Cup Qual with actual World Cup coverage, I was talking about it. Messi ended up being the solution to every problem. Two plus two, Messi. We don't have the ball, Messi. Who do we give the ball to when it gets to the Messi? Who do, who isn't having to pass the ball to Messi? Who's the one that we have to give the ball to finish Messi? That ended up being the only solution. Now you end up having different players say, hey, it's my turn. I step up. I end up doing this. I end up doing that. And of course, you have the captain that sits there and he's the one that's writing the ship and only writing the ship. He's the one that ends up 
taking this the ship to where it needs to go instead of having to worry about all the other details because a, a captain that's worrying about every single detail and having to occupy himself with every detail really isn't going to have the ship go very far now the captain worries about being the captain the captain worries about what he has to do within his responsibilities and nothing else and that ends up being the difference with this Argentina side now. Maybe it was, like I said, maybe it's not pretty. Maybe it's not aesthetically pleasing. But you know what? People went 80 plus thousand went to the Monumental. Maybe some weren't happy. Many were not pleased, of course, with the ticket prices. That's another issue in and of itself. But they ended up seeing their team win. And not only that, some had the lifetime opportunity of seeing their captain score yet again.